Okay, so here I'm going to be looking at this practice internal for the trig for level 2. And um, this is video number 2, I guess. There's another video I've made that's just looking at it from achieved point of view, from the survival point of view. But this one I'm going to look at it from the top down on how to get excellence. So first thing I do is probably take a just quick glance at the diagram and just notice that I've got a multi-component shape here. I've got a sector three triangles, bits of information. I notice that I don't have everything. I don't have angles here and here. I don't have very many side lengths. So I'm going to have to find stuff, which is expected, I guess, for the internal. So taking a look at the words, um, OCD is a sector of a circle. It's the top part of the circle, OCD. Uh, the path from C to D, um, from C around the arc to D, is 59 meters long. So we know that that's the arc length up there. Could label that as equal to arc length. And the council will only let the development of the park go ahead if the total area is more than 2,000 square meters and if the perimeter is less than 175 meters. Okay, so I might just think about highlighting these. Some numbers that I might need. So they want us to investigate whether the park will be able to be developed by checking both of these conditions. So basically here, we need to check to see if that's going to be true. The next bit they're going to ask us is, in spite of whether it meets the conditions or not, the council then decides to cut costs by reducing the area of the park by the enclosed sector by 20%. So I'm going to stop reading here and just notice that really the first thing I need to do is actually figure out whether it's even going to get developed and meet these criteria, part A of the question. So let's work on that. We need the total area and we need the perimeter. Okay. So coming back up here, um, I need to find the total area as my first port of call. And so that means I need to find the area of this triangle, the area of this one, and the area here, and the area here as well. Now, area of a sector, we'll remember, is one-half r squared theta. And you'll notice I do not have theta. And the area of a triangle is one-half b, c, sin, a. And from the looks of things, we can actually get started on part of this, noticing that I have an angle sandwiched between two sides here so I can actually solve for the area of this triangle. So I'm just going to scroll down to another diagram that I've got. Um, one of the key things about this assessment is that you want to make sure you keep your working really neat and well organized. So although you'll have scratch paper and you can just write on that, I'm just going to put a little diagram here so I can see that and talk to you about it while keeping my work as neat as I can with my terrible tablet handwriting. Okay. So total area, let's work on that one. Just to identify our goal. So first triangle I'm going to look at is triangle OCB. Again, labeling it by the corners, by the vertices there, OCD. And the area here is going to be equal to 1 half B times C times sin A. And inside of the triangle, I can label this as A. That would be little a, and then I would have b and c. So area is going to be equal to 1 half times 32 times 25 times sin of 75. And that is going to be equal to 386.37 um, meters squared. Don't forget your units. So 386.37 meters squared. Okay, tick, that's one area done. Um, and now I need the rest. So again, reminding myself that I'm going to need area here is going to be 1 half r squared theta. I notice that I don't have theta, but I can actually solve for it. So I might take a look at the next thing here. So find, um, find theta. In this case, that's angle D, O, C, but finding theta is probably good enough. So remember, we've got an arc length formula is equal to R theta. And you'll notice we've been given the arc length, 51.9 meters is equal 
to r theta. And again, that's r times theta. And let's take a look. What's the radius going to be here? So remember, it's part of a circle, so either of these legs would be the radii. And you'll notice that c, what I've called c there, o to distance oc, is actually 25 meters, and that's my radius. So 25 times theta. So here I've got a formula with only one unknown of 25, so use some algebra to solve this, dividing by 25 on both sides. We get 2.076 is equal to theta. I might just show that 2.76 radians is equal to theta. So now I've got my angle. Um, and I will go ahead and then solve for the area. So the area of sector DOC will be equal to one half r squared theta. So that's one half times 25 squared times 2.076 radians. And plugging that into our calculator, we will get 648. 0.75 meters squared. Again, watch your units, meters squared. So I've got two of the four areas done. Now let's take a look at what's next. And sometimes it can be helpful to just box up your working a little bit so that you can see um, see what's been going on and help make it organized again to communicate your solution clearly. Okay, so looking at those next triangles, um, I'm noticing that I really don't have much information here at all. And over here I've got one angle on one side, but I really need some more information. You know, it doesn't really matter which of these we go about to solve first, because um, they're both going to take a few steps. So I think for me, I might just think about um, moving along to the next triangle here. And again, I'm looking at it going, okay, this is interesting. I've got an angle and a side combination, like I'd need for a sine rule. But I've got nothing else. Or do I? So here's where you need to take a big picture approach. This is a sector. Remember, a sector is part of a circle. And all radii within a circle are equal. So this, in fact, will also be 25 meters because radii are equal. So radius equal. So OC is equal to DO, and that's how I get that side. Now that I've got that side, I'll notice using the sine rule, I can actually find this angle down here. So let's go ahead and find angle, what is it, DAO, angle DAO. And the reason I'm trying to find this is because it's quite clear to me right now I don't have enough information to find the area of that triangle. I need two sides that are sandwiched, and currently I've got two sides and an angle that's not sandwiched. So looking at it, I know I can find this angle, and if I do, I can use 180 degrees inside of a triangle to find that one, and then I can use my area formula. So find angle DOA. So going ahead and using our... Um, sin rule here. We're going to have sin a, sorry, labeling this a. That will be little a, and we have b and little b. So sin a divided by 25 is equal to sin 69 divided by 38.8. So again, times in 25 to the other side, same on this side, times in by 25, those cancel. So sin A is equal to, if we plug all that into our calculator, we get 0 0.6015. And my final step would be A is equal to sin inverse of 0 0.6015. Again, for some of you who have the shortcut formula memorized without showing all the working, that's okay. As long as you write out the formula first, make sure you at least write out the steps that you've done to calculate it. I'm just showing all the working here. So A, in this case, is going to be equal to 36.98 degrees. Okay. I now know two sides inside of that triangle, and I can find the third. So find angle ADO, which is this guy up here. 
going from A to D to O, following it around. So find angle ADO. And that's just 180 degrees in a triangle, so 180 minus 69 minus 36.98. And we get 74.02 degrees. Okay. So I might just tidy that up a tiny bit so we can see better what's going on. Um, I know that this one down here is 36.98. And this one is 74.02 degrees. And now I'm looking to see if I can find my area formula. And here I can, if I call that angle A, this side B, this side C, that becomes side A. I've got an angle sandwiched between two sides, so I can use the area formula. So carrying on, area of triangle D O A be equal to one half B times C times sin A. So that's equal to one half times thirty eight point eight times twenty five times sin of sixty nine degrees. And the area in this case calculates out to be forty six four hundred and sixty six point three meters squared. Okay, so we are finding some good information. We've got three of the four areas done, and now we just need to get that last one. So, taking a look at this, I don't have a whole lot of information still. I only know one side length of that entire triangle. So, I'm going to polish that up a little bit so I don't have to look at it. Let's say that that's the 36.98 degree angle. So let's look at this bottom triangle. What bits can I actually find? Uh, I notice here that I've got angles at a point, add to 360. should be 360 degrees all the way around. So find angle AOB. And again, that's just AOB. 360 minus, well I know I've got 69 degrees and minus 75 degrees and minus, ooh, theta, which I only have in radians currently, but remember I can't mix rate degrees and radians together, so I quickly need to convert that into radians, or into degrees, so here, radians 2 degrees, we want degrees, so you want the 180 on top, so you're going to times by 180 over 2 pi. So we're going to take 2076, times it by 180, divided by 2 pi, and here we will get 118.95 degrees. So I know that this theta is actually equivalent to 118.95 degrees. So 360 minus all that stuff is going to result in an angle that is 97.05 degrees. So now we know 97.05 degrees, which is pretty good. So we have an angle and we've got one side. Remember we need an angle sandwiched between two sides to solve for the area. And I don't have a whole lot more information here, but I really need to solve for this angle over here, this A on that side. So let's take a look at what kind of pairings we've got. Um, I do actually now have an angle and a side that I compare, and another angle and a side that I compare. So I'm going to go ahead and use the sin rule to solve for that. So finding length, in this case AO, the distance from A to O, I'm going to use the sin rule. So A over sin of A which is equal to B over sin B. And in this case, that's going to be, here's our angles again, A over sin 74.02 times, or is equal to 38.8 divided by sin 69. So A divided by sin 74.02 is equal to 38.8 divided by sin 
of 69. So to solve this one out, again, what we're going to be doing is actually timesing to the other side. I could have done that in the other step, but I'll just do it here. A is equal to 38.38 times sin of 74.02, still divided by sin of 69. And here A is going to be equal to 39.95 meters. Okay. So taking that back up to the diagram, we've got 39.95 meters. So now we have a side, an angle, and a side, and we can find the area of triangle a, O, B. So area of triangle A, O, B, one half times B times C times sin A. It's going to be equal to my area, so one half times B, which we can call the 39.95, times C, which we'll call the 32 times sin of that angle, which we've just solved for, to be 97.05. And that is going to be equal to 634 meters squared, which is pretty good, because now we've got all four areas. So I can say in here the total area is equal to 634 plus 466.3 plus 648.75 what's our last one? 386.37 plus 386.37 and that is equal to 2135 8, or about 2,136 meters squared. Um, and before we go on to the next thing, remember that was one of the critical components they wanted us to solve for, was whether or not the area was more than 200 meters squared. And the next thing is about the perimeter being less than 175, so in fact we have found that the area is more than 200 meters squared, so we'd actually want to say that. So this meets the requirements. And is bigger than 200 meters squared. So you have to remember to state the obvious. Don't just write down the number answer. Make sure you explain what you mean by that, that you understand that you've just solved for part of the criteria that it's more than 2,000 meters squared. Okay, so the next thing that they wanted us to solve for then was the perimeter. And taking a look at the diagram again, here we have to put in the information that we need that we've solved from the last one, but I notice that for perimeter I've got already one length, two lengths, I just need two more. So I'm just going to hop straight onto this one and solve for it. A, A, B, C. So find length CB and that's going to be using the coast rule so A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A so 32 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times 32 times 25 times cosine of 75 and that is equal to 1,234.89 meters. Um, not really meters yet. Uh, so, remember the last step here, we actually need to take the square root of both sides to find just A. So the square root of that ends up being 35.14 meters. So now we know another length. And from the diagram above, we'll remember that this is 97.05 degrees, we've already solved for it, and that this side here was 39.95. So again, using 
the coast rule, if we call that A, we have A, we can say that this is B and call that one C. So find length AB. So A squared is equal to 39.95 squared plus 32 squared minus 2 times 39.95 times 32 times cos of 97.05. And in this case, A squared will be equal to 200, sorry, 2,933.81. So a will be equal to taking the square root of that, which gives us 54.16 meters. Okay, so 54.16 meters. So total perimeter is equal to 38.8 plus 59.1, sorry, 51.9 plus 35.14 plus 54.16 and that is going to be equal to um, 175 meters, which is what they were asking for. So that's all of part A of the problem. And basically at this point you've got yourself to a merit at the least. So again, make sure you actually state the obvious, that you put into some simple words what it means. Don't just solve for the perimeter of 180 and assume that the marker is going to recognize you know that's one bigger than 175. So make sure you state the obvious. So let's look at part C of this problem. Sorry, part B. Um, in spite of whether it meets the conditions or not, the council then decides to cut costs by reducing the area of the park enclosed by the sector enclosed by the sector by 20%. So they're going to make the sector 20% smaller. It decides to leave the angle COD the same. So that basically means this angle will stay the same and they're just going to try to make this sector 20% smaller. Um, so here they're asking us we're going to be changing the radius OC and they want us to know what would the new radius be. So that's the idea here. They're going to keep the angle the same and what we would do is possibly change the radius to make it a new length. So something like that could happen. Um, and from there, we can go about answering the question that they're that they're getting at here. Comment on whether the altar design is likely to meet the requirements of the perimeter or not. So, 20% less um, for the area of the sector, and the area of the sector is this one here: 648.75 meters squared. So. original area is equal to 648.75 meters squared and they want this one to be 20% less. So the first thing for me to figure out is what's 20% less of that. So if I'm taking 20% off, I know that I'm going to have 80% left over, so I'm just going to solve for what's 80% of this number. So to find the percentage, just times it by 0 0.8 for 80 percent. And that's times in, and we're going to get 519 meters squared. So that's the new area that they want. 
keeping the angle the same. Okay, so finding the new area. Um, again, this might rely on algebra for us, so area of a sector I know is equal to one-half r squared and theta. I know theta, I can figure out what one-half is, and I actually know what the area of the sector is, so I can use this formula to solve for the radius. So if I say 519 is equal to one-half times the radius squared times the area, or times the theta, which was 2.076 radians, I'm now going to solve for r. So to do that, I will, well, timesing by a half is basically dividing by two. So I'm going to say one, 519 times two divided by 2.076 is equal to r squared. So to solve for it completely, I need to take the square root of both sides. And in this case, I'll get r is equal to 22.36 meters will be equal to the new r. So <coughs> that's the new radius that they'd want us to use to try to make the area work out. Um, so that would be something like this. We're cutting down on the radius. And likely, we'd probably also have to change the shape of this a little bit. Those would come in a tiny bit as well to keep the kind of overall shape the same. But what they're asking us to comment on is whether the altered design is likely to meet the requirements of the perimeter or not without making any further calculations. So they're telling me, don't figure out what all these other changes would be. Just take a guess about if I've changed this, whether or not I'm going to be able to still meet the calculations. So one thing that I could look at is that the arc length is going to be smaller. So a new arc length here would actually be shorter because we've changed the radius, right? So we can say here the new radius will shorten the arc length. Um, and we could actually calculate it here. They're not asking us to, but we can because it's not a big calculation. So arc length is equal to r theta. In this case, that would be 22.36 times 2.076. And that would be equal to 46.4, which is kind of roughly 5 meters less than um, the original one. So about 5 meters less than original. So in this case it's likely that we'd get the perimeter um, down to that requirement of 175 meters. The perimeter will be reduced from 180 meters to less than um, 175 meters that they're looking for. And anything else that we would look at here, in the, in the actual problem they state to us, um, the top, comment about whether the altered design is likely to meet the requirements for the perimeter or not, without making any further calculations. So I do know that the arc length is going to be reduced, and so overall it should roughly meet that, just because the arc length comes down we know here that the rest of the design should stay the same, so DA and OB will stay the same and the angles will stay the same. So basically what they're saying about what's going to stay the same is we're still going to have 38.8, we're still going to have this length and this length all constant, they're just going to tilt in ever so slightly to match up. So those lengths would change in here. So the area's changed overall, but really the only thing that's changed about the perimeter is the arc length. So it should actually meet the requirements here. So just looking at what we've said, the new radius um, will be shorter. The arc length uh, might be equal to 46.4 meters. And that's about 5 meters less than the original, so it's likely the perimeter will be reduced from 180 to less than 175 meters. So it should really work out from there. And if they wanted us to be more specific, again, although they're saying not using calculations, I'm just going to use them anyways. Um, total perimeter
will be equal to 38.8 plus 46.4 plus um, 35.14 and 54.16 from the other parts of the diagram. And this is equal to 174.5 meters. So it does, right? Um, and again, without the calculations, this makes sense because all other lengths held constant and only the arc length was reduced. So there you are. That's kind of getting to excellence for this particular problem. Um, again, an important thing is to keep it organized. Doesn't necessarily to have to be super neat handwriting like mine, but make sure that it's actually organized and the marker can figure out exactly what you were solving for for any particular thing. So making sure that you label things like area of triangle DOA to say that's what you were solving for there. And don't be afraid to write, and write on the diagrams. Um, it's fine to get them all cluttered up, but don't be afraid to erase things off of there as well as long as you've got all of your working documented nice and clearly. So hopefully that was helpful and good luck with the next one.